Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog, and we are continuing Carnage Week. This time, we're kind of deviating from main Carnage stuff, because obviously we have God Carnage running around with John Shade, and we got Kenneth hanging out with like a Cletus Cassidy, Iron Man, Extremis, hybrid, you know, Carnage on Earth. So those are going to be continued in the next episode. We're going to talk about Carnage Reigns, uh, parts one through four in the next episode. But in this one, I want to do a little bit of a precursor for Carnage Reigns, and talk about Red Goblin because we have two issues here, three and four, that we got to discuss that take place between uh, you know where we were in Carnage and where Carnage Reigns begins. So I want to kind of just finish off what is being happening to Normie here because Normie obviously last we saw him was in the sewers with the Goblin Nation with uh, our friend Philip Burek here who's been resurrected and all of the goblins now have the the Goblin formula put into them so they're super strong and they're you know narrowing in. On, uh, on Normie and his grandfather Norman, who uh, who's very weakened and drained for most of his blood, because most of that blood now has been pumped into the Goblin Nation to make them super strong. So that's where we last left off, and I just want to cover this because Normie plays a part in the upcoming Carnage Reigns. Not a big part, but he kind of comes in at the halfway point and towards the end. So I want to just kind of finish off where we were with him before we get into Carnage Reigns. So with Red Goblin number three, um, and I also have a bonus review in this one too. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Venom number 19, and there's a reason for that, and I'll have a digital code for this, so stay tuned till the end of the episode. When I talk about this book, I'll give out the digital code at that time. Um, but that does pertain to this, because in issue three here, we wrap up the first story arc with the Goblin Nation and Philip Eric coming back. Then we have a one-shot story here where it's Red Goblin versus Gold Goblin, uh, you know, Norman's new identity. And then I thought it'd be fun to just include this issue as well, because this is a standalone issue by Al Ewing, which has uh, Venom versus the Gold Goblin uh, that kind of takes place around the time of these two Red Goblin issues. So we got a lot of Goblin stuff in this one, and I kind of like it because there's a scene where Normie goes, dude, there's so many Goblins out there now, and there's so many symbiotes, I just want a day off. And I totally hear you, Normie, I really do, because that's the sentiment some fans have as well, myself even sometimes, where it's like, dude, there's so many goblins, there's so many symbiotes, like, let's pump the brakes. But we can't, because we're the Venom vlog, we got to talk about all these symbiotes. So let's dive into Red Goblin number three real quick. And these aren't going to be full of spoilers, but we are going to talk about some spoilers. But these have been out for a while, so hopefully you're okay with me, you know, dissecting them a little bit more than uh, than normal. But uh, we have Alex Pachnadal, obviously, who's uh, the writer of this one, and Jan Balzudia, who is doing the art. And again, I love Jan's work. So, so cool. Very clean. I love the colors on this book, too. The whole team, I think, is killing it. And it's really made me take another interest in these characters. Like, I really like Normie. I liked him in the MC2 universe with uh, Mayday and all that stuff. And in the main Marvel universe, they kind of did things with him here and there. But ever since they kind of did the Red Goblin or Goblin Child and, and kind of made him friends with Dylan, all that stuff's been really, really good. I think it's a good use of the character. And, uh, and so I like what they're doing here. This is really neat stuff. Because it starts off with a flashback where Norman is, you know, on the train with Normie. And there's, uh, you know, a homeless gentleman comes up says, hey, I could really use some help. And Norman's like, I ain't helping you move along. And uh, and he's like, you know, why didn't you help that guy? And he's like, look, we're Osbournes. And even though I'm trying to be a better person, there are some people that if you help, they're just going to keep mooching off you or asking for more. And, or at least that's, you know, Norman's uh, perspective of it. Uh, but, you know, this is all about Normie's story, and Normie doesn't really see the world that way. And Norman has a very, you know, narrow viewpoint on symbiotes and what they are. And as we'll find out in these two issues, Normie has a different opinion on symbiotes, uh, something that feels like it's taking more accountability than what Norman, you know, was viewing them as. So I kind of like that because that makes sense. Because Norman really wouldn't take accountability. He's a rich guy. You know, he oversees a company. He's done a lot of bad things. And although he says he regrets those things now that he has, you know, his sins have been taken away, I still feel like he doesn't really take accountability for certain actions that he does. And he's trying. Like his miniseries, you know, as we found out in issue four and five, which we'll get into those. I'll do a you know episode where we break those down at some point. Uh, but in those, it's him starting to take accountability. But this flashback, I think, is you know taken during that time before he gets to that point. So I like that because, uh, you know, Normie here is really trying and he's fighting off all these goblins to save Norman's life. He's like, dude, you know, Norman's here bleeding in the foreground and Normie is getting his butt kicked back here. And the whole time he's fighting, you know, the suit is like, let me out. Like Rascal's like, let me out. Let me take control. I'll take care of all these guys. And Normie's like, no, we're not fully bonded. You know, I, if we do this, it'll cause you, know, we'll have to bond in order to do this. And I'm not willing to give up. I don't want to do this. You know, I don't want to uh, kill anybody. 
And Rascal's like, you're, we're running out of options because it's, you know, these guys are going to kill us both and your grandfather if you don't let me go. So yeah, they're inside his mind and they're kind of talking and uh, Normie is seeing Rascal in physical form, which is kind of cool. And Rascal looks like Normie, you know, he kind of mi mirrors him a little bit. And that's where Normie gets this idea where he's like, okay, so that's what symbiotes are. Like, you know, if I'm a monster inside, that's what you're tapping into. So this creature that you want to let out that will kill everybody and hurt everybody that's not all you that you know like you're still an innocent you're a, a clean symbiote sliver from carnage that was wiped out from the hive and separated from it and it's not as corrupted as carnage normally is so you're like a good sliver you're you're the beginning of you know it's like having a pet and 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 there's no bad pets there's only bad pet owners that turn the pets into vicious creatures so I don't want that to happen to you and I don't want that to happen to us, I guess, but I'm starting to realize now that you aren't the monster here. You're trying to let the monster in me out. And he goes, because I'm an Osborne and I have it in me to be awful. And so that's what happens <laughs> that, you know, Normie kind of in a way comes out with, you know, the help of the symbiote and they just wreak havoc and just clean house on all these, you know, Goblin Nation people. So yeah, really cool. I really like this whole thing. And then it actually ends with, you know, Normie escaping and he takes Norman to the hospital. And at this point you have uh, Liz Allen, you know, his mom talking to his principal, you know, and, and she's like try, trying to figure out what's going on with her son. Where, why is my son missing? Because he disappeared from school. And so you have that Timothy Anders kid or whatever his name is. You had the kid who was uh, hanging out and trying to like befriend Normie and, and protect him from the bullies. He's sitting out in the hallway as the last person who saw Normie but he doesn't know what happened to him. So Liz is trying to figure that out when she gets the call that Norman's been dropped off at the hospital and she has to go see him. So, uh, so yeah, Norman's like, okay, I guess, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just leave my grandfather here and I'll go talk to the symbiote and figure out what I am. But while he's outside, he sees a homeless woman and the two of them start talking because she has a dog. And that, that phrase comes back where it's like, yeah, there's no such thing as bad pets, just bad pet owners. And that's when Normie realizes, yeah, I'm going to take accountability for this. That creature that, you know, got unleashed in the sewers that was me, an Osborne, and that wasn't just the symbiote. It was a symbiote helping the real me come out. And that's as scary as that is. I need to take accountability for that. So I really dug this issue. I thought it was really fun. I think that, you know, Alex does a great job writing it. Jan does a great job drawing it. And, uh, and I think this is a good team here. And I'm looking forward to this team continuing their story after Carnage Reigns, because obviously, you know, these stories get disrupted. And, uh, you know, even though Alex is still writing, the Goblin issue, the Red Goblin issue that's in Carnage Reigns. I don't believe Jan is doing the artwork on it. I don't remember, but we'll get into that in the next episode for sure. Uh, but either way, I, I like this team and I'm looking forward to when they pick up this Goblin Nation story because there's a cliffhanger here. Even though it was a cliffhanger that was kind of there in issue two and they just repeated it, it's still there and it's setting up who Philip Urich thinks is the Red Goblin. And obviously he's off base with that you know theory, uh, but uh, we're going to see what kind of horrific things that leads to um, in future issues. So uh, yeah, that was really well done. And I love that. I love this issue a lot. And I like this one too. I'll just briefly talk about this one because this is essentially Norman realizing that, you know, his grandson is the Red Goblin. He's like, look, man, no one would have come into that sewer and saved me, especially someone dressed as like a carnage type creature. You know, who else could it have been? Like I, I you know, inflicted you with this horrible thing back when I was trying to kill Spider-Man and, uh, and turned you into the goblin child. And then here you are, you know, with the creature and we need to separate it from you. And, and so Norman kind of tricks Normie into getting into this chamber to separate the suit. And after he gets him in there, he turns on the machine and he starts ripping the suit off of Normie. He grabs Normie and Norman pulls him to safety. And then it's just the symbiote rascal inside this machine and it's being killed. But at the same time, there's a, something, you know, someone sabotaging Osborne's business and everything. You have this guy who's Gary is his name, but everyone gets his name wrong. Someone calls him Jerry. Someone calls him Larry. And he's kind of this forgettable, you know, overnight security guard who has uh, been tricked by Hammerhead to steal, you know, stuff from Osborne uh, because he, you know, Hammerhead, I found this guy had a gambling addiction and he owes Hammerhead money. And a Hammerhead found out he worked for Oscorp and he's like, oh, good. You can then steal some goblin stuff for me and and we'll call it even. And so Gary's in this tough position where he's trying to steal something. And in order to do it, he has to turn off the power to the building. And then he does right when, you know, a Norman is trying to kill Rascal inside the machine. So Rascal gets out and is not happy with Norman. So there's a big battle there. And then there's a big battle with the suit trying to bond with Norman again. And he's fighting against it. 
And then, you know, Normie getting it back and being and telling his grandfather, look, man, there is no such thing as, you know, bad pets. It's bad people. And this symbiote, it has a chance to be good. And I have a chance to be good. So we're going to try to do it together. Um, and you just got to let me, you know, and, uh, and if you want to tell my mom, if you want to get into all that, you know, just know that, uh, there will be ramifications because I'm going to tell you, put me in a machine that could have killed me. <laughs> so basically they have a one, you know, like, like Osborne's, they have a secret on each other that will prevent them from, you know, from others knowing, uh, very, it's kind of like, reminds me of Lex Luthor, uh, and his father on, uh, you know, Lionel on Smallville kind of reminds me of that relationship. And I dig it. I think it's pretty cool, but I didn't want to just end on that one because this is a cool issue, you know, having red goblin fight gold goblin and, you know, having the Osborns fight each other. I did like this a lot. And so that's why I wanted to include this issue, which I'll put the digital code up right there. Boom. This is a one shot kind of story. Al Ewing coming back after, you know, the big issue 18 where I made the Green Lantern reference, you know, and everything um, we have here Venom on a street level story. We don't have Eddie in this story. It's actually Dylan going to visit his friend Normie and uh, and then, you know, kind of seeing that Norman is still not a good person or he doesn't feel like Norman should get a chance at redemption. Um, so that's what this story is about. It's basically like classic Venom lethal protector stuff where he's like, no, this guy is bad. And we're going to stop him. So uh, so he's hanging out with Normie. And that's when Norman comes in and is like, hey, why don't you boys come down to dinner and we'll talk at dinner. And so uh, while they're having this big meal, that's when, you know, Dylan starts poking at Norman. And he calls himself Dylan Weighing, which I really like. He didn't want to say Dylan Brock because he didn't want to give himself away because Norman doesn't really know who Dylan is at this point in the in the whole grand scheme of things. So or at least I don't think he does. So he says he's his name is Dylan Weighing just to keep himself more anonymous and, and not on Norman's radar. And he says he's a friend from school for, for Normie. Um, but, you know, this whole issue, though, I thought was really, really well done because it goes into, you know, uh, Dylan's kind of POV mentally and him talking with his symbiote. And then it goes into Norman at times and him talking to himself about what he wants to do because they hear about this crime you know, this guy Slide, it's someone who took over the mantle of the character Slide, and he's live streaming a robbery that he did. And so Norman goes to stop him. He's like, yeah, I, you know, I'm not a hero. I'm not a vigilante. I have lawyers that are telling me not to wear this suit and punch people and, and stop people because they could sue us and everything. Um, he goes, but I still can't stand by and let, you know, just bad guys get away with things. So he stops him. But then that's when Dylan leaves the dinner as well and decides to go fight Norman. So this is a whole issue where the two of them are fighting and Venom is beating the crap out of Norman. I mean, seriously, like this is as bad of a fight as Norman getting beaten up by um, Ben Riley recently when he was Chasm. Uh, so Norman is just not doing too well. He's not, he's not handling, you know, these fights very well. He, he's bleeding out in the Red Goblin book. He got beaten by Chasm in that book. Um, in his five issue series, he met a jack-o'-lantern and got beat up a little bit by jack-o'-lantern. And now he's just getting his clock cleaned by Dylan, who is just messing him up left and right. But then and Norman starts laughing and he's like, you know, I don't know what's really going on here. I don't know if you're really mad at me or if you're mad at something else. And, and that's when Dylan realizes, yeah, I think I am projecting a bit here. So I'm just going to, you know, let Norman be. I'm not going to kill him. I'm not going to turn into Norman to kill him. And that's, you know, I don't know if he wants that, if he's really a good guy, if he's really trying to change. But, you know, some people thought my dad was a bad guy at one point and he changed. So maybe we'll just keep an eye on him. And that's what he says. He's like, I'm going to keep an eye on you, Osborne. You, the second you step out of line, I'm coming after you and I'm going to finish what I started here today. And he's like, but, you know, at the same time, Dylan trying to, I don't know how old Dylan is really anymore. I feel like is he he was like 10 or 11 or something when we first met him, but he feels like 15 or 16 now. He just feels, you know, like they they write him like where he's really forward thinking. And I don't know, that's, you know, I could see someone being street smart, like Dylan being street smart and Normie being like forward thinking smart um, and calculating. But anyway, the dots that Dylan connects at the end here is that, you know, sometimes when you do these things, when you let your emotions get the best of you and you, you know, you just let your anger out on maybe the wrong person, there are consequences to that. And you see this wall that he threw red go or gold goblin into, um, this wall got dented. And then inside that wall, there was a pipe that ruptured because of the crack through the wall. It, it ruptured the pipe. 
and the power that that was going down into the basement, it was uh, keeping something contained. So just random dumb luck, I guess. Uh, but that's fine. That's comic book stuff ha that has that sometimes. Um, but it lets out our friend, I think Flexo was his name. Yeah, Flexo was his name. Oh, but yeah, it lets out this guy and he is ready to now go probably attack Venom. And we'll get into that after we get through Carnage Week. We'll have some more Venom issues. I think issue 20, 21, and 22 We'll cover all in one episode like we did with these three, and uh, and we'll give out digital codes for any books that have them at that time. So for now, though, this was just fun. I like the Red Goblin book a lot, and I'm really looking forward to reading the tie-in issues to the you know Carnage Reign storyline. So we're going to be getting into that very, very soon. And then I really dug this, actually, to give them credit, because I know I crap on this book sometimes, and I don't really like all the time travel elements, but I do like the street-level stuff, and this felt like a classic Venom episode here like even though it starred dylan i really dug it i was like you know what i could see a book like this you know with dylan and it really working and me really liking it uh but all that kang the conqueror time travel you know uh you know extra arms multiple eddies you know meridius storyline i'm getting kind of over that one um you know so it's nice to know that dylan though is a strong enough character to where after all this big epic hubaloo that they do that maybe there is some good street level stories they can tell with them afterwards and bring the character back to its kind of kind of its roots, um, but still take it in a new direction. So you know, and in in the meantime, if we get more little one shot stories like this with with uh, Dylan, I'd really like that too. Um, so yeah, it's he's a good balance. He's he's the half of the book that I have been liking, and where the Eddie stuff I haven't really liked too much. But let me know your thoughts down below of these three issues. I'd love to hear them whether you agree with me or disagree with me, whatever it is. Let me know down below, and we'll keep talking as always down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and we have more Carnage Week coming up tomorrow. Thanks so much. See you then. Peace.